My internet was down all last week, but surprisingly the ratio of how much this sucked to how much I actually enjoyed it was only 60-40. Here's the 60. When you get off of work at 7 and you have to go home, eat dinner, go to the library, and finish all your homework before it closes at 9, that's relatively stressful. It doesn't give you a lot of flexibility and it's not very relaxing at all. Two days before what I like to call the lack of internet fiasco of 2012, my best friend convinced me to get a Tumblr. And let me tell you, to get a Tumblr and immediately not be able to use it is a little bit cruel. Also, once you're done priding yourself on how efficient you were at the things that you had to do, you don't have the ability to do the things that you want to do. By the end of the week, all I wanted to do was curl up in my blanket and watch YouTube videos. I wanted to do this so badly that I actually considered taking my comforter to a Starbucks and camping out. That's a little bit sad, <laughs> to be honest, and not very fun. As for the 40% loveliness, I can't say it was a week without being bundled up in bed for hours. In fact, I went to bed before 9 o'clock on multiple occasions. I also read two books and watched three movies, the latter of which being pretty out of character for me, actually. I never watch movies, I'm really cinematically illiterate, but that's a story for another time. And the last reason it was sort of nice to have no internet at home? When I had to babysit for 9 hours on Saturday until 2 in the morning, I totally would have accepted their Wi-Fi as fair payment. But instead I got their Wi-Fi and $95, so can't argue with that. I'm glad to say now though that my internet is back and everything is fine, and if you have a Tumblr we can be friends. And now to go buy apple cider. Oh, yum.